Let me ask you, first of all, about the lure of mm -hmm. totalitarianism, the lure of authoritarianism. Uh, what is in that lure that uh, has not only you know, people in Poland, even though it was a close election, but people in Poland, uh, the people of Hungary, uh, the people who dealt with the Soviet Union from, you know, 45 through 89, uh, to move away from democracy? It seems to make no sense for a lot of us in the West. So actually, my book is making a broader and more dramatic argument than that, namely that authoritarianism has a lure for all of us. Um, and that includes Americans, it includes people in, in Europe, in, in people in parts of the world that haven't been dominated by communism or by authoritarianism in the past. Um, you know, there is a there are reasons why uh, democracy bothers some people, the cacophony, the mm -hmm. argument, the constant debate. Um, the, 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 the institutions that sometimes don't live up to what they're supposed to do. People become disappointed in these kinds of political systems, um, and then they seek alternatives, um, and they join political parties that have um, authoritarian ideologies or authoritarian practices, um, and then sometimes when they come to power, they undermine those democracies. Um, so this is, a, um, this is something we all need to be aware of. I mean, look, historically, all democracies have failed, um, and sooner or later, um, each one of our democracies may come to, may meet a crisis. Ours met one once before in the 19th century. That was what the Civil War was. It was part of the nation not wanting to be um, bound by the same rules as the other part. Um, and it's, it's just not, we can't ever imagine that it's impossible that that could ever happen again. And, and now, is this a new phenomenon, or have we always had let's say, a third of our populace that was more attracted to authoritarian leaders. And the reason we're talking about it is because Donald Trump got a few more thousand votes in Wisconsin and Michigan uh, than Hillary Clinton. I don't think this is just about Trump. I mean, I, I think the threats of your question is a broader one. You know, there are some people for whom um, the system of checks and balances, for whom the constant noise and anger of democracy are bothersome and annoying, and they would like leaders to come to power who can make them shut up. Um, and you know, we you know we could face that threat from the left. We could face it from the right. Um, you know, at the moment, I think um, there are aspects of the Trump administration that are extremely worrying. Um, Trump very deliberately seeks to speak to and attract people who dislike, um, you know, the, the noise and, and, and chaos of democracy. And this is why he uses this expression, law and order, which sometimes he tweets in capital letters. Right. Um, I suspect this is why he sent federal troops to Portland, so that he could stage, in a way that will then be on television, a scene of kind of federal troops putting down protesters, and that will please some of his viewers and voters. Well, this is not just about Donald Trump as a point of my past question, that uh, there is, uh, there has seemed to be a segment of our population uh, that, that has always been uh, more attracted to authoritarian thinking. That said, people that I have grown up with, who voted for Gerald Ford, who voted for George H.W. Bush, who voted for Ronald Reagan twice, um, this, this right, center-right group of voters that you discuss in this book uh, are now moving uh, towards a more nationalist view and are some of the same people who call me at least once a week and say, hey, Joe, I saw how people are getting phone calls and being told that they're testing positive when they haven't even taken a coronavirus test and all these other absurd conspiracy theories um, suggesting that, uh, that what they're reading on Facebook is proving that the coronavirus is in fact a hoax. So look, one of the themes of the book is the power of conspiracy theory and the way in which conspiracy theories can be used to mold politics. Um, you know, we all have this idea that authoritarianism or totalitarianism, you know, you need a big ideology, you need Marxism, you need Nazism. Actually, you can, you can win people over. You can create doubt in your own institutions. You can create 
um, uh, you know, a, a negativity about your own society. You can create, you know, a, a lack of faith in your own in, in your own country by using conspiracy theories that are designed to sow doubt and distrust. Um, I saw that happen first in Poland. I, I, I wrote about it in the book and in the Atlantic piece um, that you referenced at the beginning, um, how a conspiracy theory was used to make people doubt the the, um, the patriotism of their own government. Um, and we can see how it functions in this country. People are read conspiracy theories, and that leads them to doubt science, to doubt medicine, to doubt, um, you know, all, all kinds of institutions that we used to trust. And we do see how Donald Trump plays on that. I mean, look, when he when he attacks the, the bureaucracy, American patriots who work for the civil service as the deep state, when he attacks the FBI, the CIA, um, judges, you know, let alone the independent media, you know, these are this is a political tactic that authoritarians use all over the world. Create doubt in institutions, make people you know, feel that their system is no longer, um, you know, they, they can no longer trust it. Um, and then you create the possibility of some kind of alternative or some kind of different political system. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.